If you're creating vertical videos for TikTok, Instagram, or YouTube shorts, then editing them professionally can be pretty overwhelming. So today I wanna to show you how you can edit your vertical videos right inside Final Cut Pro from start to finish, including setting up your project, editing your video, adding sound design, and then I'll even show you how you can seamlessly loop your content and add captions really easily. And as we go through the edit, I'll show you a bunch of tips, tricks, and other apps that can help speed up your workflow and get even more professional results. And this video was brought to you by Riverside, but more on that later. All right, so here we are on my Mac. And the first thing I'm gonna do is just set up my folders and my project so that it's all organized and we know where everything is located. So I'm just gonna create a new folder and I'm gonna call this X3 short because I wanna make a short video about the Insta360 X3. And then within this folder, I wanna create a couple of new folders. I wanna call one video, one audio, then I'm gonna go working files. And you can do whatever folder structure you like. This is just what works for me. Now, this is the clip that I wanna use as my base. So, so this is part of a YouTube video that I made recently comparing the X3 to the X4. And I've already cut it out in vertical format, so it's ready to go. So I wanna just drag that into my video folder, just like that. Now with this particular clip, I actually don't want to use any of these shots of me skating for Instagram. I wanna actually replace them with a whole bunch of clips from my trip to Europe. So I've already exported a whole bunch of clips that I took from my trip to Europe, and I wanna use these as my B-roll. So I'm gonna create a new folder just within the video folder called B-roll. And then I'm just gonna drag and drop all of those clips into the B-roll folder. So now that that's all organized, I'm gonna actually get into Final Cut. If it doesn't look quite like this for you, then your layout might be slightly different. If you wanna get it to look the same as mine so you can follow along, just hit Command Zero, and that will reset it to the default workspace so it looks exactly the same as this. Now to set up my project within Final Cut, I'm gonna go File, New Library. And I'm just gonna save that into my Working Files folder. I'm just gonna name it X3 Shorts, hit save, and I create a new library for every video project that I work on. If you're not super familiar with libraries and how they work, I've got a whole nother video on that, which I'll link below. But within here, we've got our event, so I'm just gonna name this also X3 Shorts. And then what I actually used to do was I used to use events as kind of like folders within my library, but I realized that's actually the wrong way to do it. The correct way is to use keyword collections. And to create keyword collections, you just right click on your event and then go new keyword collection. And then you can just name it whatever you want. So I'm gonna do video, new keyword collection and audio. And then all you have to do is simply go to your folder and I'm gonna drag my base clip into my video folder or my video keyword collection right here. Let go and now I can see within my video keywords, we've got the entire clip ready to go. Now a quick tip to save you time having to manually create keyword collections, you can just drag and drop an entire folder like this B-roll folder into your event and then that's gonna automatically create a B-roll keyword collection for you. So now I've got all my B-roll clips organized into this collection. And the last step for setting up my project is to actually create the timeline. So you can just go down here to new project, press this button. Once again, I'm just gonna name this X3 Europe short. And then obviously we wanna make sure our video format is set to vertical because we're making a vertical video. If you choose any of the other resolutions, they're gonna be in landscape. So just make sure you go vertical. And then for some reason it defaults to 720p, which is pretty low resolution. So we wanna make sure it's at least 1080 or 2160. And 2160 is 4K, 1080 is HD. Most short form social media platforms only support HD. So we can just select that one for now. And then always make sure your color space is set to Rec 709. For some reason, again, it defaults to Rec 601, which is not right. So just make it sure it's Rec 709. All the other settings are the same. Just hit okay. And now we have our timeline and you can see we've got our vertical timeline ready to go, ready to start editing our video, which is step two in the entire process, editing the actual content. So I wanna to go to my video keyword collection and just click on my base clip. And as you can see, it's surrounded by this yellow box. That means we've selected it. So I'm just gonna click and drag it into my timeline. And if I play it back, we can actually hear my voiceover, which is exactly what I want. But obviously, like I said, I don't want any of this skateboarding footage. I wanna replace it with all of my Europe footage. So I wanna to go to B-roll, my B-roll keyword collection. And what you can also do is, you can adjust the size of the different sections of Final Cut. So I don't need to see quite so much of the timeline, so I'm gonna drag this down a bit so I can 
can see more of my main clip. And then all of these previews are really quite small. So in order to make them a bit bigger, I can just go up here and click this little drop down menu. And here it says 30 seconds. So just need to extend this. And just like that, we can see more of each individual clip. So we can get a better idea of what's in each one. A shortcut for this is just Command plus. So that will zoom in essentially to all of your clips or Command minus to zoom out. So now that we can see the clips more clearly, we can start adding them into our main timeline. And I'm gonna zoom in again with Command plus so we can see more of our main clip. And then you can just click and drag any clip into your timeline above your main clip and it will be good to go. Currently, we've got some noise coming from the background of this clip I shot in Rome and I don't want that. I just want to hear my voiceover. So in order to mute this clip, just look for this little white line and you can just click and drag down to fully mute the clip and that will take away all of the audio. An even quicker way to do it is just to go option S and that will mute the entire clip. But this entire clip is a bit too long. So all I have to do is go up to one end of the clip and you'll see this little handle. Just click and drag that and you can lengthen the clip or extend it to however long you want it to be. So I want it to be relatively short because I actually want to see this part where I'm talking to camera. I just want this as the intro the clip. So that's exactly what I want. Now, another way to quickly select which part of the clip I want for the video is using in and out points. So here, I just want this clip of the Coliseum. I just want to keep this part out where my wife jumps into frame. So I'm just going to put my out point here. So just press O for out. Then as you can see, this yellow box here is going to select just the part of the clip that I want. So if I now click and drag, it's only going to take that yellow section and add it to my timeline. Once again, if I play it back, there's some background noise coming from that B-roll clip, which I don't want. So I'm just going to hit option S to mute it. And now that's exactly how I want it to be. Now I'm going to add another clip. And once again, I'm going to go in and out to the points that I want the clip to start and end at. Drag that into my timeline, mute it with option S. And if I play that back, that's looking pretty good to me. But I actually want it to be in a slightly different position. Another really quick and easy way to do this is to go to this little drop down tool menu here and select trim. The keyboard shortcut is just T. But now if I click on my clip, I can move the section of the clip that's actually visible in the timeline. So I wanted more of this end part to be visible. So I'm gonna move it to about there. Now if I play it back, that's more of the section that I want to see. Now I can just hit A to go back to the regular select cursor to go back to the regular selection tool and we can move on to our next clip. Now I want to add in some of these cool waves crashing on the beach in Italy. So I'm just going to go in and out, drag and drop that in. Once again, mute option S, play that back. Now that looks pretty cool, but I actually want to see this in slow motion. And I actually didn't originally record this in slow motion. This is just standard 25 frames per second. So to slow it down, just go to the end of your clip and hit shift B. Now this will bring up your speed selection tool. So just click this drop down menu and you can fully customize the, the speed of your clip. So you can make it faster, you can make it slower. Now typically if I'd slow a clip like this down by like 25% and play it back, it's gonna look super stuttery and not very good just like this. However, in Final Cut, you can do a really cool thing using AI, which will smooth it out for you automatically. So just go back to the drop down menu and select smooth slow mode. Now, if we change that to 25%, just give it a second to analyze the optical flow. So this is essentially just using that AI to analyze and fill in the frames. So that's done. Now let's play it back. As you can see, that looks like perfectly smooth slow motion footage, which is actually really impressive, honestly. Like I even I need to use this more because that actually looks so cool. So I don't want to use this entire section of the clip. I just want to use the part where the waves are crashing. Now, another quick way to cut your clips is just with Command B. So just put your mouse wherever you want the clip to be. Cut, hit Command B. And as you can see, it's cut that clip right there. And I can just delete this section of the clip that I don't want. Same thing again, make sure the clip is selected. Go to where I want the clip to end, which is about here. Hit Command B and delete the end section of the clip. Drag it back to where I want it. And when we watch it back, how good does that look? Slow-mo, perfect section that I want. All right, so now let's just say I'm getting a bit impatient and I don't want to manually add each clip like this. I want to do it a bit more quickly. I'm just going to select the other clips that I wanted to use. So I'm going to go this clip, this clip, 
this one, and these ones. And then I'm just gonna drag and drop all of these clips just right into the timeline. Now, as you can see, they're all way too long. I don't want them all to be this long. I want them all to be more like two seconds each. Now, there's a super easy way to make them all two seconds instantly. Just hit Control and D. Now, as you can see, this little purple time indicator will appear. So this is showing me currently the total length of all the clips combined, which is 40 seconds. But I want them all to be two seconds each. So I'm just gonna type in two zero zero and then hit return and boom. All those clips are now two seconds long. And I can just drag them all into position like so. And then I can zoom in again and I'm gonna move that back into position. Once again, hitting option S to mute all of the clips. And as you can see, they're actually all looking pretty good. And then I just wanna add one more clip at the end, which will be this final shot of me walking through the Vatican Museums actually, which is a very cool experience. So I'm just gonna go in and out, drag that in. And also I just wanna slow this clip down as well. So I'm just gonna option S for mute, shift B for speed. I'm gonna smooth slow-mo it to 50% speed. And again, just use the handle to trim the clip to the length that I want it to be at. And just like that, that's looking great. And if you want a quick reference for all of these keyboard shortcuts, there's a cheat sheet for Final Cut Pro below which you can download for free. So that's our base edit. Now, obviously I wanna do more. I wanna add some music, sound effects and captions. But before we go through that, a lot of people these days are actually repurposing their YouTube long form content. So if you've already got horizontal videos that you wanna cut up quickly into short form videos like this, then you can obviously do that fully manually within Funnel Cut. But what I like to do these days is actually use Riverside because it can save a heck of a lot of time. I've got this USB doc review, which I created, but what I'm gonna do is upload it directly into Riverside. So just hit upload and then drag and drop the file right here. I've actually already done this. So it's right here, I'm gonna click on that. And the cool thing is it's gonna automatically transcribe the entire video. Once it's been transcribed, you can use this feature here right within Riverside called Magic Clips. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna go through the transcription of the video and using AI, it's gonna select the best parts and cut them into short clips that you can turn into vertical videos. So I'm just gonna hit generate clips right here. And just like that, it's found three great clips. I'll have to do is hit edit, just go into one. And this is gonna bring up a really powerful video editor. So you can see on the left here, we've got the transcription. And this is the part of the video that the AI has selected. So if I play it back, we can see a preview. And this is a really good section of the video actually. And now we can just quickly do some editing to make it look even better. So I just wanna remove my logo. Then as you can see, it's showing the video in that original horizontal aspect ratio. So just go to layout and then go to video ratio and hit fill. And then just like that, it's filled the entire frame. So now when we play it back, it looks correct. Now you can also fully customize the captions, which are auto-generated. So I'm just gonna go over to the captions button and you can select from a whole bunch of different presets. This is personally probably my favorite. So I'm gonna click on that. Again, very customizable. So I wanna make the color of the highlighted text, this one. You can adjust the amount of lines. I might make this one line so it's a bit more engaging and increase the size to medium. I'm just gonna move this up a bit so it's a little bit more visible, just like so. If I play that back, as you can see, it already looks pretty awesome with the very cool captions. You can even add your own branding. So if we go back to layout, we can add spacing, which gives us a little bit of a border on our video. Then we go to brand, we can go background. And then you can just select from all these different pre-installed background patterns and colors, or you can upload your own or just select a color. And just like that, we have a really professional looking short form clip. We can upload directly to TikTok, Instagram, YouTube Shorts, straight from a fully edited YouTube video. And the awesome thing about Riverside is that you can use it for all sorts of content. You can record your video directly into the Riverside Studio. This is great for doing content like interviews, YouTube videos, podcasts. I personally record my podcast right into Riverside. You can also live stream directly from your Riverside Studios. So this can be really useful for doing webinars, live streams, and you can send the stream to multiple platforms all at once, which is really impressive. And then like I've just given you a bit of a demonstration of, there's a fully featured video editor right within your browser. So it doesn't matter where you are in the world, or even if you don't have a particularly powerful computer, you can edit all of your content right on the web. No need to download anything or even even use Final Cut if you don't want to. I personally use Riverside on a regular basis and I definitely recommend it as a great tool for all content creators. You can sign up for Riverside for free using the link down in the description below if you wanna give it a try. And then if you decide to subscribe, you can use my code NICK20 to get 20% off your subscription. But now getting back to Final Cut, I wanna add some sound design. 
right, I want to add some better audio to my video to make it a bit more interesting. So I just want to add some music. Now I personally use Epidemic Sound and I'll leave a link to this down in the description below as well. But there's all sorts of places online that you can get music, even right within your YouTube studio. There's free music that's completely royalty free that you can download. I'm just going to have a quick look for some music that I think will suit this video. I actually really like this Soft House one. This is one of the cool things about Epidemic Sound. It gives you some recommendations based on your recent downloads and it's always pretty accurate for me. So I'm just going to download this in MP3 and I'm going to put it right into my audio folder that we created earlier. And then same as before, I'm just going to drag and drop this audio into the audio keyword collection. Now it's looking way too long. I don't want to see this much of the clip. So I'm going to zoom out with command minus. Now I can see my waveforms really clearly. And I think I want it to come in here. So again, I'm just going to go I for in and then O for out drag and drop this section of the track onto my timeline. And you can modify audio just like you can with audio. So I'm just gonna drag it out so it extends across the entire length of the clip. And then I don't want it to overpower my voiceover like it's currently doing. So I'm gonna to wanna to turn the volume of this down. So we just go up here to our inspector and you can just drag this down. Might make it say negative 15. Let's see how that sounds. That sounds perfect to me. So also just want to add a bit of color grading to my video just to make it look a bit more interesting. So I'm gonna add an adjustment layer. Unfortunately, adjustment layers don't come pre-installed in Funnel Cut, but you can download them for free and install them yourself. So I'll leave a link to them in the description. Just drag that onto your timeline, drag it out to make it the length of the entire clip. And then I'm gonna add my own custom LUT. So I'm just gonna to go to effects, all video and audio and type in LUT. I'm gonna add this custom LUT effect to the adjustment layer. And then I'm gonna select LUT02, which is my own LUT. And you can actually download this LUT as well. There's a link in the description. So I'm gonna add that. That's adding a bit of a color grade. It's looking a bit too intense. So I'm just gonna turn that down. My inspector with the mix. Just wanted to add a little bit of a gentle look. So let's go 50%. As we can see, that just gives it a bit more of a consistent look throughout my entire video. So we've almost finished editing the clip. The last thing I wanna do is seamlessly loop the video so that when people are watching it they can't actually tell when the video starts and when it ends. So in order to do this it's actually pretty easy. All you have to do is go to your end clip and then just extend it out a little bit. So let's just drag it out to about here and then go to the end of your base clip, select the b-roll and hit command b to cut that ending section off. All you have to do is take the end section and drag it back to the very beginning of your clips. Make sure this little extra gray area is deleted. Then I'm just gonna shorten this a little bit so we can still see some of this clip here. But now what's gonna happen is when we watch to the end of the video, natural and true to life, and that leads me to the It's gonna loop back to that original clip and look like the video actually never ends. And you can actually do this with any sort of clip and it's a really easy way to seamlessly loop your entire vertical video. Now I've got two things left, exporting and adding captions. So in order to export, just go up here to your little share button and then you can just hit export file or default. Just go to your settings section and you wanna change some of these settings. So don't go video only, make sure it's video and audio. And there's a few options here. There's mastering, publishing and broadcast. The only two you ever worry about is mastering and publishing. I generally go mastering because it's gonna give you the best quality, but make sure you change the video codec to H.264. That's gonna make sure your video file is nice and small. And you can see you've got a preview here. This is gonna be about 80 megabytes when it's exported. And then just hit next. I'm gonna save that right into my X3 short folder, press save. And then up here, you've got a little button you can click to give you a preview of how the progress is going on your export. Shouldn't take long at all to export. And then just like that, we have our short all ready to go. The last thing to do is to add captions. And once again, I'm gonna do this in Riverside. So go back to your Riverside Studio, hit upload, and just drag and drop this file right into Riverside, hit upload. Just give it a minute or two to process. Now that it's upload, I'm just gonna hit edit. And then as you can see, it's already transcribed the entire video. Just gonna remove my logo once again, and then go to captions. Same as before, just select the preset that I like. I'd click on that. I'm gonna do the same as before. I'm gonna drag it down a little bit, turn it into single line. I think I might choose this color for the highlight this time. And just like that, I now have perfect captions for my video. I've tried using heaps of different plugins for Final Cut when it comes to captions, but none of them are as accurate or as straightforward as using Riverside. So I highly recommend it if you wanna add captions to any of your vertical videos. From here, it's just a matter of hitting export, exporting the video, and then downloading it and uploading it straight to any of your chosen social media platforms.
So there you go, I hope that was helpful. Like I said, I've linked all the resources down in the description. And don't forget, you can try Riverside completely for free using the link down below. And then if you do decide to subscribe, you can use my code Nick20 to get 20% off any subscription. But before you spend hours and hours editing, make sure you watch this video right here where I share five hacks that will save you hours of time when it comes to video editing.